So, good morning again, and welcome to the final conference of the EU-funded project GRACE on November 9 and 10 in Potsdam. November 9. For us Germans, November 9 is a very historical day in a negative and also in a positive sense. On, in the night from November 9 to November 10 in 1938, here in Germany there was a so-called Reichskristallnacht, resulting in the Holocaust. And on the other hand, on November 9, 1989, the wall in Berlin was broken and was falling down. As a result of the peaceful revolution in the eastern part of Germany and uh, resulting in the German unification. So, a very historical day. And therefore, I would like to start with my talk, showing you a nice photo my daughter made about 15 years, 20 years ago at the remainers of the Berlin Wall, you can still see these traces in Berlin. And uh, this photo is showing a sentence by Erich Fried, an important German writer, with the sentence, Wer will, dass die Welt so bleibt, wie sie ist, der will nicht, dass sie bleibt. And this might be translated in those who want the world to continue as it is, do not want the world to continue. So welcome again to the final GRACE conference. And I will start with the major goals of uh, GRACE, which are increasing of the transparency, traceability and accessibility of information, dealing with potential risks and benefits associated uh, with the use of genetically modified plants and products thereof. Then to provide a systematic and structured quality assessment of existing evidence concerning safety, but also concerning impact of genetically modified plants. To identify knowledge gaps regarding impacts of genetically modified plants, to test the design and to identify the scientific value and limits of animal feeding trials, in our case 90 day and one year trials, and also alternative approaches, uh, including in vitro and omics studies, and also to provide an open access database and a central access point for reviewed studies and further data. The rationale uh, to conduct the feeding trials is based on the call which have been, has been published about three years ago by the European Commission. And I will just uh, cite uh, two sentences from that call. Specific questions about the design, execution and interpretation of results of animal feeding trials for assessing the safety of GM food and feed remain to be answered. And with regard to toxicological studies based on animal feeding trials, proposals will aim to clarify the need and scientific added value of 90-day feeding trials in all cases, 90-day feeding trials on the basis of full GM food feed, and extending the duration of 90-day feeding trials, in our case extension to one year. There are a lot of motivations why we performed these GRACE studies. Some of them uh, is the issue of transparency. Uh, there's always the argument uh, saying that uh, the data uh, which are part of the applications are not uh, freely available, at least uh, there are copyright issues concerning the use of these data. Then uh, it is repeatedly said that uh, most of these studies uh, have been performed by the industry, so therefore we thought it would be very important uh, also to perform these trials on the basis 
of public money. Then uh, we uh, decided uh, to use MON810 uh, because uh, there are a lot of data available on MON810 and also uh, several commercially available uh, varieties. We also included several conventional varieties um, to generate historical data for the laboratory in uh, Bratislava and also to define the biological variability. And at the end, uh, we uh, involved uh, stakeholders in all steps uh, of our GRACE project and we tried to perform uh, the GRACE project in an ethically responsible way, especially concerning uh, the animals which have been used uh, during our feeding trials. As you know, uh, GRACE uh, has also some political implications. Uh, the implementing regulation 503 requests uh, for the mandatory performance of 90-day feeding trials and I will just uh, cite uh, two sentences from Article 12 of that uh, Commission Implementing Regulation saying that at first the Commission shall monitoring the application of this regulation, the developments and scientific knowledge on replacement, reduction and refinement of animal use in scientific procedures and the publication of new guidance from EFSA. The Commission shall in particular monitor the outcome of the research project called GRACE. And second, the Commission shall review the requirement to perform 90-day feeding studies in rodents with whole genetically modified food feed on the basis of new scientific information. The results of this review shall be published by June 30 next year, at the latest. Uh, therefore, we decided uh, already to provide uh, conclusions and recommendations from our animal feeding trials and alternative approaches. We have been discussing uh, the drafts of these conclusions and recommendation, uh, recommendations uh, during our uh, stakeholder workshop in October this year. Uh, these uh, conclusions and recommendations are provided in the booklet, which is part of your folder. Uh, you have got today in the morning and uh, these are also included in the respective talks to be provided today. And these conclusions and recommendations are dealing with uh, the five topics design, performance and interpretation of animal feeding trials with whole food feed for GMO risk assessment, analysis of plant material in vitro cell and tissue culture, general considerations from animal feeding trials and uh, the issue of the three R, replacement, reduction and refinement. As you know, uh, GRACE uh, has two parts, two main approaches and uh, the rationale for the evidence synthesis part uh, also is uh, based uh, on the call published uh, three years ago and I will again cite from that, environmental health and socio-economic effects of GMOs have been the subject of scientific analysis. However, a comprehensive review of national, EU and international research activities in this regard and in view of any potential benefits of GMOs is missing. Again, impact analysis, risks and benefits. And collection and review of information must take account of scientific quality and could be based on an open access database. Uh, the motivation uh, in this respect for this part of GRACE was to promote comprehensive reviews, to address specific questions of concern and to go beyond the already existing narrative reviews. And uh, we have been performing uh, evidence synthesis uh, in three main uh, parts uh, concerning human animal health, uh, concerning uh, social economy, and also concerning possible environmental uh, impacts of genetically modified plants. 
and we provided uh, a harmonized uh, framework for the evidence synthesis. Our motivation was also uh, to improve the transparency, availability and presentation of the scientific information in order to provide better understanding for all stakeholders and the general public. And we made it by uh, the use of standardized and reproducible reviewing procedures by active stakeholder involvement. I think here we have been really setting the scene by establishing an open access database and uh, also by establishing a central access point. We had uh, 20 partner institutions working together with us in the GRACE project from different European countries, also representing uh, universities, representing SMEs, representing governmental institutions. So already in the frame of GRACE, uh, there was a very broad uh, stakeholder involvement. And uh, as I said, we have been following two major work streams. On the left side, uh, you will see uh, the tasks uh, concerning the feeding trials, evaluation and recommendations on methodologies, uh, two uh, work packages, subchronic and chronic toxicity studies, alternative approaches for commercialized uh, genetically modified food and feed. And both work packages have been supported by a task force, also including experts outside uh, of GRACE. Then uh, the second uh, work stream, uh, the reviews on uh, impacts of genetically modified plants, health impacts, uh, socio-economic impacts and possible environmental impacts. And these three work packages have been supported by a work package uh, developing a good practice for reviews in uh, GMP impact assessment. Then, in addition, uh, we had a work package dealing with database uh, technology and networking and a work package uh, dealing with stakeholder and user involvement. And, of course, uh, we had two additional work packages dealing with management issues and dealing with uh, communication and dissemination. Uh, stakeholder involvement and communication. We have been performing stakeholder involvement uh, in a two-step procedure in an open and uh, non-selective way uh, with full transparency with uh, multiple mechanisms uh, for the dialogue with the stakeholders and also by tracking uh, the stakeholder comments. Just a few figures uh, from that uh, stakeholder involvement and uh, communication activities. Uh, we had between 32 and 56 uh, stakeholder participants at each uh, GRACE workshop. As you know, we have been performing several uh, stakeholder workshops in the frame of GRACE. In these workshops, all major stakeholder groups have been represented. Also a broad spectrum of uh, European member states. More than 500 written comments and questions uh, have been uh, sent uh, to us. We published uh, 10 consultation reports and uh, three publications on that issue are under preparation. The uh, GRACE communication strategy uh, followed uh, a principle of full transparency. We established uh, a website which will be continued after the end of GRACE. All information is uh, freely accessible, not only uh, information from our stakeholder dialogues, but also uh, any kind of information from our feeding trials, from our systematic reviews and so on. All steps of the stakeholder engagement are well documented. Uh, we tried very hard to answer uh, any requests uh, from the journalists. Uh, we also reacted uh, in a fully transparent way on uh, critics and accusations. 
uh, all these uh, debates are uh, reflected on our GRACE webpage and we established uh, a scientific discussion forum in the archives of toxicology. So this is uh, just a short uh, overview uh, about the uh, Kadima uh, database which uh, contains a lot of tools, uh, tools uh, for example uh, for the evidence synthesis uh, which is uh, accessible by policymakers, the general public, scientists, risk assessors, so by users in general and uh, also provides uh, a lot of links uh, to important other databases base uh, dealing with biosafety and also impact assessment of genetically modified plants. And this is done in a close col uh, collaboration with uh, the Collaboration for Environmental Evidence. Uh, concerning the evidence uh, synthesis, uh, in the uh, frame of potential environmental impacts, uh, six review topics have been covered concerning uh, human and animal health impacts, four review topics concerning potential socioeconomic impacts, four review topics. Seven peer-reviewed uh, protocols are already available and the final manuscripts are under preparation for each of these review topics. And we already published uh, proposals for a good review and practice. Uh, one of these uh, publications is, uh, answer is uh, um, answering the question, can systematic reviews inform GMO risk assessment and risk management? At least we are trying to answer that quite difficult questions. Uh, concerning uh, the feeding trials and alternative approaches, uh, we have been using plant material mon -E 10 two different mon -E 10 varieties, so the event in two different genetic backgrounds. Uh, we have been using the respective near isogenic controls. In addition, we have been using four conventional maize varieties. We have been performing uh, a quite diverse set of uh, test approaches, two 90-day feeding trials, one longitudinal and metabolomic uh, study, also 90 days, one one-year feeding trial, then uh, several uh, omics analyses uh, on animal tissues and also on plant material, and also uh, in vitro cell-based assays. And we have done that in close cooperation uh, for example, uh, with the also EU-funded uh, project uh, G-TWIST, we have been using MON-A10. Uh, G-TWIST is using NK603, but we are cooperating uh, closely together. So concerning uh, the achievements uh, of the feeding trials and alternative approaches, uh, GRACE has been provided a unique set of comparable data in order to draw conclusions on the appropriateness of design, execution and interpretation of rodent feeding trials and in vitro studies with whole food feed for being considered in the risk assessment of genetically modified crops. All the raw data have been made, published, uh, have been made public and will also be made uh, public on the CADIMA uh, database or in case uh, the documents are too large then of course uh, so that we are not able to place it uh, on the website uh, then anybody who is interested uh, can uh, approach um, the respective partners uh, from GRACE and uh, can get the access uh, to these data. Um, then um, until now we have been publishing uh, five uh, papers in peer-reviewed journals. There are nine uh, additional uh, papers uh, under preparation and GRACE identified the need to promote and explore synergistic effects between research projects. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, a close cooperation um, with uh, the eu fund project GTWIST and uh, we also established a very close uh, cooperation with uh, the project GMO90+, which is funded by the French 
government. And as you can see here, uh, we took care for comparability, complementarity and also synergy between the tr uh, three different projects regarding exchange of plant material, uh, exchange uh, of animal material, exchange of protocols and also at the end uh, agreement on publications uh, of the data and uh, also uh, we are providing all the raw data uh, from these different projects. There are some uh, follow-up activities. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, also after the end of GRACE, uh, a lot of these activities will be continued. So, for example, the Kadima uh, database uh, will be uh, continued, uh, also in the frame of GTWIS, but also uh, pub, uh, also funded uh, by my ministry in Germany. Uh, we will be performing uh, a systematic review which will be based on the results uh, from the evidence map on animal feeding studies. Uh, this uh, systematic review will include uh, critical appraisal criteria which are just worked out in close cooperation with uh, GTWIS and external experts. Then the Kadima tools uh, for the systematic review uh, will be ready in November and everybody uh, will have an access to these tools without any kind of payment. So these tools will be absolutely freely available for anybody who is interested uh, to use it. Then uh, we decided uh, to organize a training workshop in April next year. Uh, to explain how to use it, these tools and uh, to uh, so real uh, on-spot uh, training how to perform systematic reviews. And um, of course, um, we are trying to strengthen the collaboration uh, between GRACE, uh, GTWIST and uh, the uh, CEE. Um, at the end of my talk, I think I should explain a little bit uh, the conference uh, structure and the character of the conference. Uh, you have already got uh, the booklet with all the presentations which will be provided during the two days here. Uh, you also got uh, a small booklet uh, with a description of GRACE and with uh, conclusions and recommendations resulting from our feeding trials and the alternative approaches. Um, we decided that on day one uh, we would like uh, to present uh, a summary, not details, but summary of results, conclusions and recommendations in uh, three sessions. A session on feeding studies and alternative approaches for assessing GM health risks. Then second session, good practice and evidence synthesis of GMO impacts. Third session, stakeholder user involvement, transparency and accessibility of data. And on day two, uh, we will have more a reflection from a broader perspective. Uh, we will reflect on lessons learned. Then uh, we will get comments from different perspectives, so from different uh, related EU funded, but also other, uh, for example, GMO 90 plus uh, funded projects. Uh, we will discuss about uh, future research needs, also about implications of GRACE and related research projects. We will reflect on systematic reviews and evidence maps in GMO risk, assess, uh, GMO risk and benefit assessment. And this will be done in two additional sessions. One session reflection, the other session related and future research. And at the end we will have two round tables. So, thank you very much and I can then...